Suicide hotlines are pretty busy in Japan right now. And according to Japan, it's because of the coronavirus pandemic. Yahoo everyone, I'm Super Genki. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about suicide in Japan. It's a topic that's really important to me. I made a video about it last week talking about how someone was actually pushed to suicide on Terrace House because of cyberbullying. And I thought this article did a good job at portraying why this problem is persisting so much. We'll be reading it today from japantoday.com. The article is called Suicide Hotlines Busy as Coronavirus Ravages Economy by Elena Lies. All right, let's get into it. The phones at the Tokyo Suicide Hotline start ringing as soon as it opens for its once weekly overnight session. Once weekly Overnight session. Both operating days and volunteer numbers at the volunteer run Tokyo Befriender Call Center have been cut to avoid coronavirus infection, but the desperate needs remain. Cut to avoid coronavirus infection. Volunteers, people that want to do this, have been cut to avoid coronavirus infection. Now, those, those first two sentences in the article are already striking out to me because I would think if there was any job that you could do at home that would be meaningful, it would be this job. And if you're volunteering to do this job, I'm pretty sure you would be willing to do it at home. So I don't know why you have to apparently be in an office to be on the hotline. There are so many people who want to connect and talk to somebody. But the fact is, we can't answer all of them. Center Director Machiko Nakayama told readers. Well, I think that the reason you can't answer all of them is because you're cutting back operating days and volunteer numbers due to a quarantine for a job you could probably do at home, and you're only having it once a week. Health workers fear the pandemic's economic shock will return Japan to 14 dark years from 1998, when more than 30,000 people took their lives annually. With the grim distinction of the highest suicide rate among G7 nations, Japan adopted legal and corporate changes that helped lower the toll of just over 20,000 last year. Worried the current crisis will reverse that downward trend, frontline workers are urging the government to boost both fiscal aid and practical support. We need to take steps now before the death begins, said Hisao Sato, head of the NGO that provides counseling and economic advice in Akita. You know the prefecture long known for Japan's worst suicide rate? National suicides fell 20% year on year in April. What does that mean? National suicides fell 20% year on year in April, the first month of the country's soft lockdown. But experts said that was likely due to an internationally recognized phenomenon in which suicides decreased during crises, only to rise afterwards. Hmm. Hmm. So let's, be, let's put on our thinking caps right now. So after the lockdown began, national suicides fell 20% year on year in April. So that means comparatively speaking, the previous April to the previous April to the previous April, they fell 20% this year because of lockdowns. And experts apparently they're saying that it's because of the national, the worldwide phenomenon, but maybe it may be because schools were closed and people weren't going to their jobs. I think that that's more of an accurate kind of view as into why 20% because that's a really big shift in just one month happened because you're removing the stress of being Japanese from everyday ordinary life and people can unwind and not feel such pressure to be something that they may not even want to be. It's the quiet before the storm, but the clouds are upon us, Sato said. Prevention workers see echoes of 1998 when a sales tax hike and the Asian economic crisis first drove annual suicides above 30,000, then to a peak of almost 34,500 in 2003. Economic circumstances is the second biggest reason for suicides behind health. According to 2019 police data, which also shows that men are nearly three times more likely to kill themselves than women, and most are in the 40 to 60 age group. So let's unpack that, that sentence a little bit. Economic circumstances is the second biggest reason for suicides behind health. In Japan, work culture is like, is like the air you breathe, right? So your work culture ties into your economic circumstances and also your health. 
So I think that, well, I get it. I don't 100% agree to it because I know that there's a Japanese word out there called karoshi, which means death from overwork, and it's pretty popularized because it was made in Japan, this, this word, to describe what it was like. People would just like pass out on trains and die from overwork stress. And, and it's not suicide, but it's of the same kind of problem. The current crisis, which is forecast to shrink Japan's economy 22.2% this quarter, is especially dangerous for cash-strapped small and medium-sized businesses for whom government subsidies might not arrive in time. It's tough. A lot of people are really worried, said Shino, Shinosuke Hirose, chief executive of a small human resources firm that has lost nearly 90% of his business. It's like waiting at the execution grounds to see if they survive or not. A health ministry official in charge of suicide policy told readers his department planned to ask for more money from a 1.1 trillion central government stimulus package to help fund measures such as extra hotlines. Um, I mean, if the volunteers are out here and they want to volunteer, I'm, I don't know why, again, that you can't do this from home. The official, who declined to be named as he was not authorized to speak on the record, added there were limits to central government's action and local efforts were crucial. So we're kind of pushing this problem down the road to the local people. It sounds like a roundabout kind of issue right now. Some believe the steps taken in recent years to bring down the suicide rate will hold firm through the current crisis, but others, others are not so sure. Kyoto's University's Resilience Research Unit has predicted 24,000 more suicides for each 1% rise in unemployment. If the virus subsides in a year, unemployment could peak at around 6% by March, lifting annual suicides to around 34,000, it's estimated. If pandemic conditions persist for two years, a rise to 8% unemployment by March 2022 would see suicides spike over 39,000. Of course, social support is important, but they won't be able to ramp, up, ramp this up suddenly said unit director Satoshi Fuji. Preventing bankruptcies will, help, will start helping immediately. Mm -hmm. You think so? At the Tokyo Befrienders call center, the phones continue to ring. The formerly nightly service now opens on Tuesdays only, with one volunteer a shift instead of four. Wait, one volunteer a shift instead of four? One volunteer a shift instead of four. How many people are volunteering to do this? Are there not a lot of volunteers out there? Could you increase the numbers? It sounds like kind of like a big problem to, to combat with such a low amount of people to help you combat that problem. I would think that there would be like 10 at least. But let's keep reading. Although it plans to reinstate another day in June. Everyone has tried to get through lockdown. But now they reflect and think, why was I doing it? What hope do I have? Nakayama said. At what time I think a lot, a lot could choose death. It's a hard issue to talk about. But like with that death of Hana Kimura on, on Tara's house, I feel like it's important because, you know, it's a hard issue to talk about suicide rates. And I've, I've had friends who have had suicidal desires before. It's a hard issue to talk about. And I've, I've talked to people about suicide in person before. But I really want to talk about a solution. I really want to try to figure out what could really help people in this situation. I don't deny that the government is helping people, but are they helping people as much as they really could be? You know, it's a, it's a really hard time now for everybody. And if you're going through the, if you're going through something, and if you're going through something like this, I think a hotline can probably help. But for a giant population of Tokyo, I think it's around 10 million. I think only having four people on this one hotline or maybe one person on this one hotline is it's kind of a rough situation to be in. And I don't know if it's the only hotline that's out there, but I would like to see these social problems be taken a little more seriously because human life matters, you know, and especially with what we're seeing around the world right now. I'm appalled at what some of the people have been doing around the world, especially in my country disrespecting human life and livelihood just because of their own selfish mob-like mentalities. These people, they're not hurting other people, like not directly. I mean, the mobsters, they are. But people that are being pushed to the brink of suicide are not hurting people directly. They're just hurting people indirectly through their life being missing in other people's lives. But 
I think we need to talk about this. We need to increase awareness about these social problems because social problems are real problems. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.